You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the party, everybody. It is another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, how you doing, man? I'm all right, fighting this little cold I got, but uh, other than that, I'm doing pretty good. That's good. I hope you get to feeling a lot better real, real soon. And uh, maybe we'll uh, create a few laughs for you and everybody else to uh, help get through those tough days. There you go. Um, a couple of interesting topics today. Um, before we get to our uh, NFL topics, I want to go through a couple others. The first one, I want to talk to you about McDonald's, bro. I don't know how much McDonald's you eat. You know, I'm guilty of, you know, McDonald's here and there. Okay, so you you probably wouldn't be able to identify with this. But I was Have reading, I ever had McDonald's? Yes. Right. But it's probably been a good three, four years since I've had McDonald's. I, I need to be like you, bro. I need to be like you. I'll probably be a lot healthier if I do. I, I mean, no, because I just substitute it with, with Burger King or <laughs> Wendy's or something like that, you know. Okay. Now, they might be just like this then. I was reading an article, and a McDonald's worker reveals the most annoying thing customers can ask for. And I thought about all the things that they could ask for that would be annoying. But when he mentioned... Go ahead. Let me guess before you give the answer. Just ice in a cup? Actually, no. That's not it. Okay. Uh, What he said was people would order fries with no salt And then when they pull around to the drive-thru window, they'd get their food and ask for a packet or two of salt. Bro, I am so guilty of this. And the reason why they do it is the same reason why I do it. Everybody loves McDonald's fries when they are fresh and hot. Not after they've been sitting soggy in a heat lamp. And, you know, I'm going to call out Andrea Kearney. Yeah, my sister. Because she's the one that got me doing this many, many years ago. Um, Because I I, I was eating with her. Uh, We met up at McDonald's on her lunch break from wherever she was working at the time. And and she ordered her fries with no salt. I'm looking at her, giving her the side eye. Why would you order them with no salt? Oh, because I'm going to get a salt packet over there um, before we sit down. I looked at her again. She's like, that way they always fresh and hot. Oh, okay. I got you. And you know, when I'm in the mood for some McDonald's fries and I really, really want them hot, I will ask for it no salt and I will do the same thing. I will tell them when I pull up at the drive through window, can I get some salt? Now, if I go in and I'm ordering, then I'll, I'll be able to look and see if they got a bunch of them under a heat lamp or if they're cooking, you know, so I'll know whether or not to, to do that. And I can imagine that it is very annoying because they have to drop another basket of fries. But at the same time, because they know the reason that we do it, they should be all right with it. Yeah. And I mean, if I remember correctly, they really salt their fries. Like really salt them. They, they, they oh. do put a, uh, fair amount on there we'll say um but see what i like to do when i go into those types of restaurants and like i said you know mcdonald's burger king wendy's it doesn't really matter and you get the fries and you know how you go get your ketchup in the little packet Mm -hmm. so you get your ketchup and salt i put the salt in the ketchup and then i mix that all up so it's all in there already i've done that i've done that i mean I thought of other annoying things, but for this to be one of the most annoying, I feel pretty good I because I know that I I'm not the only schmuck out there 
that does this to those poor employees. <laughs> so, you know, just let me let y'all know right now, McDonald's employees, I certainly, certainly apologize. I ain't going to stop doing it, but I apologize. Right. <laughs> I remember when I worked in fast food, I used to hate when they came in and ordered a cheeseburger with no cheese. So you want a hamburger? No, I want a cheeseburger with no cheese. Okay. For real? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now, before I go into the next subject, I will say one thing, though. I don't eat breakfast at McDonald's very often, but they try to get you on the slide. If you want a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, it at the time the lie last ordered it. It was almost three bucks. But if you order a bacon biscuit, add cheese, then it's only two dollars and something. It, huh. It's it's less. And and I figured that out by looking at Is the Is that menu. because it's, it doesn't have egg? I, I think it had egg too, because it was the same thing. Oh, okay. It was just the way they pressed just it. Just no cheese. They 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 may have changed it since then too. Yeah, there's no cheese, and you can add cheese, and it's cheaper than getting it by name. So I would do that, and I would watch the board, because, you know, when you order, they, they print it on there. I You know, give me a bacon and cheese biscuit, add a bacon and egg biscuit, add cheese. And if they put bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, I'm like, no, no, I don't want that. I want a bacon and egg biscuit. As soon as they change it, then say, can you add cheese on that? Then they put add cheese. The menu amount changed. Huh. Interesting. Now, they didn't probably caught that since then because, you know, nothing lasts forever. Remember, they not too long ago had uh, any size drinks, a dollar. Not in their Everything's that's gone. That's they ran out of cups. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, uh, hey, it, it, it's McDonald's. So, you know. One can appreciate it. Uh, not something like you said that we should be eating every day, but what can I say? I'm guilty. Right. I'm guilty. That being every said, every now and then it's okay. I have I have been working out from the last couple of weeks, so you know I I feel better about that. Um, gotten you know well past the the soreness stage and all that good stuff, so. I feel good there too. Um, I'm not going to be real hardcore. The holidays are here. Thanksgiving's what next week? Next Thursday, Turkey Day, baby. So you know I'm going to eat good, and you know I'll probably get back on the wagon for about three weeks. Then when we have them Christmas get-togethers, here we go again. So That's right. This this three week interlude between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, I'm basically going to be working it off again, and then after Christmas, that's when I'll get back on and stay on the wagon, possibly until my birthday celebration, which isn't until April of next year. So we're good. There you go. Okay, I can hear Kanye West behind me now, <laughs> and I want to ask you a question. Gold digger or justified? Did you get the uh the uh web that I website that I sent you? I didn't the, get a website, all I got was the text message. Okay. Um I'll I'll go over it with you real quick here. Let me let me try to find it here. Cause you know, this disturbed me. All right, you know the rapper Exhibit? I do. All right, he and his wife are getting a divorce. How and long have they been married? I, I'm going to pull that up. Okay. No, nope, that was how long it's been since he worked. When did they get married? Damn. Of course, it's probably not going to say that on there.
It does not say how long they were married. But judging from photos, I believe they've been married for a good while. Before he got big? I doubt that. Okay. But uh, she says that she wants to pay, wants him to pay spousal support. And right now he's struggling to make ends meet. She's living in their $3 million home with her new boyfriend. Red flag right there. We'll get back to that. Um, he hasn't worked in Hollywood since 2019. And um, he says he simply doesn't have the cash because a huge chunk of his income dried up during the pandemic. Um, and he says he's no longer the breadwinner. He was before the divorce. Um, and he isn't getting any money from his uh, cannabis ventures. Didn't know anything about that, but okay. Um, he says that she's someone who's doing just fine with without spousal support. He says her recent income was around $175,000 a year and claims she's living in their home, like I said, with the new boyfriend and the man's kids. Um, the boyfriend's kids or yes, exhibit's kids? The boyfriend's okay. kids. Now go back. The $175,000 what, was what now? She makes $175,000 a year. Doing what? I have no idea. It doesn't say what she does. Okay. She filed for divorce back in February. So this is almost a damn year. So, and his net worth, his estimated worth to be $3,715,000. So now we can start to put everything together. He got Man, three really? million. Yeah. I didn't I, I wouldn't think that he's that big, you know. He he's made some money, but, but I didn't you know, think he'd be that small. I mean, he used to do well, the pimp my ride stuff and all that. Well, you know, when you live that lavish lifestyle, true, it, true it that. doesn't stay. And that's one of the things that you've got to take into account. Um, I'm going to say this right off the bat. When it comes to couples splitting up, and I know there's no prenup involved, but. And I'm probably going to catch hell from this in the comments, but you should leave exactly with what you came with. Unless. And this is an underline, unless you contributed to the other person's fortune. Well, she obviously does if she makes 200000 a year. Well, my thing, though, it doesn't matter what you make uh, if you go by what I'm saying. Um, sure it does. You said it contributed. She contributed. You didn't no, say had to I'm make sorry. equal. I'm sorry. I didn't. I don't. I said it wrong. Then I don't mean contributing to you. You you brought in this. I'm bringing in this. I'm what I mean is you contributed it to helping him make what he made, helping him build what he built, contributed to the rise together. Okay, so I'm gonna stop you because I'm gonna yeah. play devil's advocate here for a yes, second. Yes, yes, sir. So contributed. What does that mean? Is that emotional, physical, and mental support while you're trying to break through and do what you're supposed to do? Yes. I'm holding the house down while you're doing all this other stuff? That's yes. contributing, right? Mm -hmm. So she contributed. Unless, see, because we we really don't know when they got married. But he you might already had a while. His, I know, but he might have already had his fortune. And she came into that. Okay. Now, if they was poor, broken down and out together, break her off some, definitely, for sure. I'm not one of these guys that say woman deserves nothing. Not at all. But if he got $20 million in the bank, she's fresh off the streets, and they get together, and it's hard, again, no prenup, but you didn't help me make this $20 mil. You're living this lifestyle 
off of whatever I got. And I'm throwing that 20 million out there as just an arbitrary number. We don't know what he had as he's beginning to lose money, but whatever X million is, if you didn't contribute to it and you live in that that lifestyle and then one day you wake up all of a sudden, you're like, you know, I don't want to be with you anymore. I got another boyfriend, but I'm going to get some of your money too. But is that uh-huh. really what happened? Is it because I got another boyfriend and now I want to be divorced? We don't know that variable either. But <clears throat> if you've got somebody and you got a job, why are you trying to take everything he's got? Well, she's not trying to take everything. Right? But but what is spousal support if you're already making 175 uh thousand a year anyway make your Depends. money live your how, life how am i how am i living how have i been living the past how many years she's living in his his mansion she's living in there I, right. i'm assuming so what that's am I, paid for what am i accustomed to you know what i mean yeah i see what you're saying that's where it's, it comes from and this is where women have it mucho better than men when it comes to splitting up, especially in, in mm-hmm. rich, in, you know, rich uh, households. Keep yes, talking. Sir. I'm looking something up real quick. All right. Um, I, I just, I just, and, and as a person who has been divorced, I feel that that is taking advantage of someone. Okay. They got married November 30th, 2014. Okay. So, so they've been married for six years. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so now we now we have uh, perspective, and, and we know it's been more than six years since Pimp My Ride was even oh, old yeah. or popular. So yes. he amassed his, we'll call it fortune, before she came into the picture. Actually, mm-hmm. I know. Go ahead, you're good. He I mean, got they got married just hours before he got arrested. <laughs> well, that's a hell of a honeymoon conjugal visit <laughs> what did he get arrested they for? had two children they had two children uh, one died days after birth and then they have a 10 year old son together alright let's talk about the child first I 100% wholeheartedly agree in child support you take care of your child No matter yes. what. I don't care if... There are some extenuating circumstances in relationships where that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, yes. For the most part, yes. Yeah, and, and you know, <clears throat> being somebody who's divorced with a child, you know, I never missed a child support payment ever. I made sure that, you know, I went without to make sure that he had whatever he needed and you know she took care of that <clears throat> now he's a grown man <laughs> that part's over and, and full disclosure uh my ex-wife never asked for spousal support she did not she understood how it is out here you know most women only ask for spousal support if their man is extremely well to do ah there you go I mean there is alimony but that's not spousal support it is but it's not you know what I mean can you can you clarify for everybody including myself wait a minute spousal support and alimony this is just my rule book brother this isn't this isn't the law (laughs) (laughs) this is just my mentality Spousal support is exactly what it is. You know, you're accustomed to getting your hair done every Thursday. I got to cover that. You know, your your car oil gets changed every three months. I got to cover that because I've been doing it for it this long. You're used to that. Alimony is basically the same thing, but different in my mind. I could be completely off base. It's just the, that's the way my mind connects it. Well, let me ask you this. And and this is where I was trying to go with it in the first place. I believe that it should be based on 
who's leaving who. If the man is leaving the woman, he needs to pay for that. If she wants out, maybe, maybe not. Disagree. It just depends on the circumstance. Uh, exactly. It has to. Why am I leaving? Right. If if Are she got another not, man, if she got the man, another man on the side, and she wants to leave him, no, you want to be not with even. Him? You you no you no, take no care not even that. Are you mentally, physically, and emotionally not supporting me? I want or, to be with someone that takes you know. I it's not about the physical side. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you go outside your marriage and you cheat, you know that's that's a whole that's a whole other ball of worms. Infidelity right. now, is now, a whole, obviously a if the man is abusive and you want out, heck yeah, you are entitled. But what if the woman's abusive? Then she's not entitled. Right. See, but the man the, files first. The man wants to leave because the woman's abusive. He wants to leave. You said if he and, wants to leave, you know what? He should I, have to pay for that. I, I think that he should not have to pay, but that's a slippery slope. There's so many variables that we're just coming Divorce up with just is now. Divorce a slippery slope all the way it, down. It is. I mean, for that, I'd have to say, man, you got to prove that she's the way she is because she will go in there with them puppy dog eyes. Gee, Your Honor, I don't know what he's talking about. He just wants to leave me. I'm I'm out here with no job experience, no job. I need my money. Yeah, I had a friend that went through a really bad divorce, oh, you know, a good five, six, seven years ago. And his his ex-wife, um, she told so many lies on him. But what got him is she had cameras in the house inside and out. And she was just that type of person. Mm. She didn't trust him for anything, but she had called the police and said that he had physically abused her. And part of his was like, just go check the camera. You see, I never even touched her. I wasn't even around her. And that's what actually helped him in the divorce because it backfired on her. But, you know, yes, women will do whatever and say whatever they have to say just to get what they want, which is to drain you dry. And the sad, sad thing in closing on this is... And most men aren't going to get alimony or child support. Right. Because they're not going to get the child. And the woman isn't supposed to take care of the man. So he's not getting that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a lose -lose. The, way the, the way that the judicial system is set up it's it's in favor of the woman, heavily skewed. In that in that particular scenario, yes, I agree. And you know, I'm not saying that it could ever be a 50-50 split. There's no way because there's too many differences in relationships and everything. That I just wish I just before. wish there was more reverence paid to men in these situations. Because <clears throat> it's I guarantee you, it's not as lopsided as people make it out to be i i would agree with that <clears throat> but you know that's why me and the missus are still together a couple reasons one we don't want to train nobody new we've been together for shit damn near 30 years been married for 27 26 and you know we don't want to pay two rents so nope i feel you on that absolutely i'm I would never go back to that dark place, that dark chapter in my life. Um, like I tell Heather, you stuck with me, babe. I ain't going nowhere. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So we're about to talk about the National Football League. Uh, the highs and the lows. The Chiefs and the rest of them hoes. It's time for football. The AFC West is a one-team race, bro. Always it just is. Always, like since the beginning of time or these last five or six years. Well, always has been this year. Yeah. I mean, what we expected at the beginning of the year and what we are getting, 
I'll get to the dog shit that is the Raiders in just one moment. <clears throat> We're talking about the oh, Chiefs no, let's, first. Let's lead with them. Go ahead. Okay. I know you saw. I know You'll you saw better. DC's uh, press conference, and I don't know if you saw Devontae's as well. His was after the game. You can tell that these brothers have so much that they want to say, but for whatever reason they cannot say. And I looked at Josh McDaniel's press conference, and it's the same old stuff. He comes up to the podium all happy. Well, there's some things that we need to work on, but there's some things we're doing right. We'll get there. You're two and seven. You're not going to get there. The playoffs just became a distant memory. This man is tanking without saying he's tanking so he doesn't get penalized by the league. And that's all there Wait, is to it. it uh, clarify, what do you mean? You can't tank in the NFL. That's, that's illegal. You would right. be fined draft picks and dollars. But right. if – but. Teams have done it throughout history. They just do. But if you no, can't prove they it. Do not. They do not. They don't. They do not do that. No, they don't. don't. Remember, the Miami Dolphins are in a court case right now because they came out and told. That's one coach. person accusing that team that he did, that he was asked to do that because he got fired. I understand. But are you going to tell me in the 105 years of the National Football League that there's been no team that's ever tanked? What would be the purpose of tanking? Higher draft pick. So you don't know if you're going to get that or not. I know. I, I'm not saying. I'm not saying teams do it every year. It may have only. I'm happened not three. saying that they ever have done it. Now fans will say we're for like the Colts suck for luck or whatever. Yeah. You know, back when they got Andrew Luck, but they weren't tanking. They just sucked. From oh, this yeah. is what's this is what's irritating for me when when the Chiefs went. Uh, two and and fourteen back in two thousand and whatever ten or whatever, we weren't tanking. We just sucked. Swallow it up and just your Raiders. They suck. Your team sucks. They're not tanking, which means that they're losing on purpose. Because if they did, your quarterback wouldn't be crying at the podium. I, I'm not saying the team is tanking. I'm saying the coach. And maybe tanking is the wrong word then, but the How coach is called. He's calling plays that he knows will not work. He's putting them in situations that are too difficult to overcome. If he gives such as uh, first and two, uh, no, sorry, second and two, you three straight running plays, the exact same play. Who does that? Who in the league does that? Marty Schottenheimer for 10 years straight. And did you get a Super Bowl with Marty? Nope, but we didn't tank. We were in the playoffs <laughs> every year. Well, you had the you had the personnel that you know it was more than just three yards in a cloud of dust with Marty. You 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 still not, had not till the not till his later tenure, early nineties. That's all it was: a coy up the gut, a coy up the gut, a coy up the gut punt. That was a big man, though. I mean, you know, that was like Derrick Henry kind of stuff then. And then in 91, 92, it was a coy and bay word, a coy and bay word. And then they threw Harvey Williams in there. But, nah, man. That, that See, that irritates me just because you're saying that the coach is, is doing things on purpose so his team doesn't succeed. All right, I'll, if, I'll do if, this. If I'll do this the, to appease you. If, if he's not Not tanking, to appease me. Not, not just you, but anybody who believes that. If he's not tanking, that's fine. Then let's say this. He's incompetent. How is he incompetent, though? He's he's calling plays that those professional players are supposed to execute. So are you saying within 365 days they forgot how to execute plays? No, no, no. Not forgot. They're just physically not executing for whatever reason. They're they're not wrapping up. They're they're missing a tackle. They're taking their eyes off the ball. Whatever it is, I'm I see that that the play call is here. They're blitzing, but I'm not checking out of it like I should. Those types of things that these so guys you, are paid millions of dollars to do. None of those guys want to lose, and they're not going to let one person make them lose. And you're saying that every single person on that team wants has to regressed. 
No, no, not, not necessarily. They're just the other team is there. We're all human. Yeah, we're yeah. all human. Their other team is just outperforming them. And Why always, did the Chiefs lose to the Colts? We shouldn't Chiefs have lost did make to the mistakes. Colts. Yeah, the Chiefs made mistakes in that game. They shouldn't have lost. The Colts out execute. How did the how did the Commanders beat the Eagles last night? They out executed the Eagles in key situations. And I will give you that. It's not like you guys are 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 not gaining yards, not scoring points, not getting turnovers. You you, you really need to watch. Case. You really need to watch these Raider games, though. I if am you look at him. the first half compared to the second half, Josh McDaniels is sending in completely different styles of plays. You're not going to tell me that they're executing the first and second quarter of every game. And they forget how to execute in the second half. And this is a team that has lost six games this year that were very close within one score. And three of those were 17-point leads in the first half. Name and something that you do well. I'm a great photographer. Okay. Have you ever taken a bad picture? All the time. Have you ever taken multiple bad pictures in a setting? All the time. Okay. But you can execute a good picture, right? Absolutely. The defense rests. That's all that's happening. They're just, they're getting out executed. Now, but, I will say this. I said this from the beginning of the year. Josh McDaniels is not a good head coach. So then we go back to he's incompetent. No, he is just not a good head coach. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that go into being a head coach, play calling, uh, leader of men. Josh Allen or uh, Josh McDaniels is a phenomenal play caller, if that's his only responsibility. Mm. But he has all this other crap that he has to deal with. Does he manage it well? No. But you cannot tell me that he's on purpose in the second half calling plays that will not succeed. Then as a coach. Especially, especially mm -hmm. if he wants to keep getting paid. Because he's gonna he's gonna throw out I mean we have Denver as something to look at. Yeah. He he never coached it down for the Jets even though he took that job and then quit the next day or some shit like that. Like Belichick was that the did. Jets or the Colts? The Colts, you're right. It was the Colts. The Jets was Belichick. And then now we have the Raiders. So if he were to completely fail this, and it looks like that's where he's at, he's not going to get another gig. So what does he have to gain from purposefully trying to make the team lose? I don't know. And we're going to find out over the course of these next few weeks because the season is winding down and – I really need to see something to give not just Raider fans, but any fans out there, a glimmer of hope that he knows what he's doing. But we already I know want he to believe doesn't him. know that. No, I, I agree with you on the incompetency in areas. But as for tanking on purpose, that means he's he is logically and strategically doing that. He ain't that smart. <laughs> uh, based on that I would probably have to agree with you I mean and as a fan I don't want my quarterback crying at the podium I don't care how bad we are you know he, he wasn't crying just because they're losing he's crying he's a very emotional guy and he he's he's had it bottled in, and you can tell that he's had it bottled in these last few weeks. And he's just at his breaking point, right? But you cry, you don't cry in front of cameras. I don't. That's not my thing. No, no, but no, no. he don't. He sh your leader of the team should not do that. If I'm on, if I'm looking at my leader and he's up there balling, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna follow this cat in the battle. You kidding me? That's why most men, fathers in your family, you don't cry in front of your family. Yeah, I get that. I mean, why? I, I really get it. But at the same time, <laughs> that man is hurting. 
And there's something that he cannot say, whether it's he's not allowed to say it uh, within the season or something that he knows is up that, I mean, for all we know, he, he might have been told, hey, look, uh, we're not going to exercise the option on your contract next year. So this is your last year. That may be what it is. Then he should be balling out. If that was the case, he should be balling. He should be running for MVP right now. Should be. But again, we don't know what the situation is. Um, we don't know if they've yes, already lost respect for him in the huddle as a we leader. We know what the situation is. The team is just not that good. Well, and that that brings me to the picks that portion. Pill for whatever it is and move on. Okay, I'm moving on because we got a couple minutes left. I want to get these picks out the way. AFC West. I almost said Oakland because I'm, you know, going back to when we were winners, baby. Um, Vegas is at Broncos. Who you got? I'm still going with my Raiders. Ride or die, even though I'm dying. Do I have to pick this game? <laughs> yes, you have to pick this game. <laughs> I mean, I prob I'm probably we the can Raiders. call this the toilet bowl. The, the, the Raiders, you know, I'll say the Raiders. Reluctantly, I'll say the Raiders. And, just because I need the Broncos to keep losing, just so my it matches my picks for the end of the year. The Chiefs are in Los Angeles playing the Chargers. Oh, so we are, yeah, everything's AFC West. Yeah, uh, we should win. We should win. I, I believe that too. The way they stunk up the joint against the 49ers, um, they started off hot. Plus, plus and, they're injured, man. They've got there's so many injuries on their team. If we don't take advantage of that, then yeah, it's we should let be. let's hope Carr shows some sack um this week and all will be happy again temporarily in Raiderland. You guys at home, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. Like, share, and subscribe. And you know, I might be crying like Carr next week. Real quick, I got yeah. a quick shout out to Mr. Mullen in Arkansas. I told him I'd do it this week. I'll fill you in later where that come from, but he's like, I can't, I've been waiting for a shout out. So I told him it's coming this week. There you are, Mr. Charles Mullen out of Arkansas. Go Razorbacks. All right. You guys stay positive, stay blessed.